Ladies and gentlemen, and it is now time for our second presenter of the day, which is Dr. David Lancaster from the International Training, Research and Education Consortium UK, or INTREC, in the topic of workplace learning and, uh, and the contribution of e-learning. Please welcome Dr. Lancaster. Okay. Um, um, I think many of you will not have um, come across INTREC, International Training Research and Education Consortium, previously. So I should perhaps briefly um, say who we are and what we do. Uh, INTREC is a, a consortium of six British education and training organizations working on international projects. Um, there are two universities, two vocational education colleges, and two private sector training companies. Um, the two universities are uh, Birmingham University and King's College London University, two vocational education colleges, in um, one in the city of Manchester and one in the region of Warwickshire, and two private sector training companies, one in the city of York and one in the city of Sheffield. Uh, working on projects in many countries around the world in education and training. And my presentation today is based um, uh, partly on the literature about workplace learning and uh, e-learning and partly on experience of our projects in various countries. Um, I'm here today in the context of INTRAC um, but particularly for the uh, participants here from Thailand, it uh, might be of interest to you that I've also um, recently, together with some colleagues from Thailand, established an organization called Gap Year Thailand, uh, which provides opportunities for young people to come to Thailand to assist in teaching English language in schools and universities in Thailand on a volunteer basis. Um, I'm not here to... Um, uh, speak in that context, but uh, if any of you later in the day uh, or tomorrow want to speak to me about that, I'd be very happy to do so. So, workplace learning and the contribution of e-learning. Um, what is workplace learning? Well, I think that there are, in the literature and talking to different people, lots of different definitions of what do we mean by workplace learning. I'm taking here for today a very simple definition um, workplace learning as the acquisition of knowledge or skills uh, by formal or informal means uh, that occurs in the workplace as opposed to uh, skills acquisition outside the workplace, uh, for example in classrooms. That's rather a narrow definition um, and uh, s some people would have different definitions to that and particularly the question about whether things like simulation count as workplace learning because they relate to to uh, work situations or whether they don't count as workplace learning because they're not actually in the workplace. Uh, but that's, that's the definition I'm um, working with today. Um, characteristics of workplace learning. Um, uh, it, it is a collaborative activity usually involving both employers and employees, um, usually in jointly determining the content of the, the learning processes. It's consistent with and supports lifelong learning. Importantly, I think it gives opportunities for people who perhaps missed out in the past on formal education and, and, and learning systems. Um, should be based on a training needs analysis, uh, preferably not uh, focused specifically on the short-term correction of job performance, but, but having rather longer-term um, uh, and more strategic um, aspirations. Uh, and relevant, uh, I would claim, for both technical skills and also for soft skills. And we've seen examples um, earlier in this conference of, of both of those. Um, a report published about a year ago uh, by the Asian Development Bank, a report on education and skills, strategies for accelerated development in Asia and Pacific, um, stated that generally in, in the Asian Development Bank's view, too much emphasis is placed in Asia on pre-employment and institutional-based training. 
Um, the implication of that statement, you might agree with it or you might not agree with it, the implication of that statement, if, if too much emphasis is placed in pre-employment institution-based training in Asia, the implication that the Asian Development Bank is uh, making is that too little emphasis is placed on workplace learning. Um, I think that's changing. Workplace learning is becoming increasingly of interest, uh, not only in Asia, but, um, but more broadly as well. Um, in the context of this kind of organisa organisation making that statement, the Asian Development Bank, um, whose uh, main priority, top state of priority, is around uh, poverty reduction, um, skills development and with it um, workplace learning can have quite a significant um, role in addressing uh, poverty reduction. Um, that's a major priority of governments and the international development banks. Uh, skills development is important in raising productivity and incomes in the informal sector um, and also giving the poor access to decent work. Now, our focus, I think, in this conference is, is uh, rather more on the formal sector rather than the informal sector, but uh, skills development, including activities that are work-related, uh, can have a, a significant um, role, I think, in the informal sector, and particularly in addressing um, poverty reduction matters. Well, what is um, workplace learning? What, what are the sorts of things that might um, be included in workplace learning? And the point I'm wanting to make here is that I think that's very broad ranging. Um, we've had earlier in this conference, and I'm sure later to come in the conference, uh, a wide range of examples. Um, and I'm listing here a number of different examples. Um, so, uh, for example, a skilled worker guides a learner in carrying out particular activities. Um, a worker is given a relatively simple task and then progressively moves to something more complex. Uh, a trainee works alongside an experienced worker. Um, sometimes in the UK we call that sitting with Nelly. Um, I think Nelly must be responsible for quite a lot of training. Um, so sitting with Nelly, or another phrase, a similar thing used in, in South Africa as a phrase and other places, over the shoulder learning. Just being with somebody else who's a skilled worker and watching what they're doing. Um, or one or more workers might be identified as people to whom um, trainees, learners can go to other, uh, can go to for, for advice. Um, a second page, second of three pages of different examples of workplace learning, um, the organization providing short training programs. Um, organization, a uh, second here, providing information and communication events. Uh, not necessarily primarily learning events, not necessarily primarily training events, uh, but which have a learning component. Um, thirdly, um, en employees are encouraged to learn from themselves through a variety of media, and that's a major focus of this, uh, of this conference. Um, it's quite significantly, I think, particularly in some of the highly technological industries, supplies of equipment providing training uh, in how to use new equipment, new machinery. Um, employees learn informally through discussions with customers, with suppliers, with other external parties. Um, workers learn in a uh, simulated environment. Uh, for example, chefs prepare meals to be, learnt, to be um, served in training restaurants or airline pilots working on a simulator. Um, are these really workplace learning or not? Uh, some people would say simulation counts as workplace learning. Some people would say that's not really workplace learning. It's something a bit different. Um, and finally, uh, groups of people working together uh, on addressing how to uh, solve problems or improve um, processes, manufacturing processes, service sector processes, and so on. Uh, as parts of quality circles or other kind of uh, approaches. Uh, so a, a broad range of examples, I think, of workplace learning. And the point I'd make there, and you may agree with this or you may disagree with this, um, is that e-learning has a role to play in many of those different types of workplace learning, uh, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily all. Um, and that e-learning um, is one of a range of methods to be complemented by other methods in workplace learning. Um, well, the 
report I quoted earlier from the Asian Development Bank said there was too much emphasis on um, uh, pre-employment training in Asia and an implication of too little emphasis on um, workplace learning. Uh, but I, I think there's quite a lot of evidence of an increasing interest and an increasing emphasis on workplace learning both in Asia and Europe and elsewhere. Um, why is that? Uh, well, for a range of reasons, I think. Um, firstly, or not necessarily most importantly, but firstly listed here, uh, need for organizations to be not simply like others. Uh, that in an increasingly competitive global environment, um, the need for an organization to be different from others and better than others, uh, and for its training and learning processes not simply to be what other organizations do, uh, but to be um, different from what other organizations do. And that can most easily be achieved and be delivered through training which is uh, workplace-based rather than external formal courses. Um, secondly, efficiency and effectiveness of workplace learning is increasingly recognized, um, as are the limitations and problems and costs of external training. Um, thirdly, uh, by focusing on the specific needs of an organization, um, workplace learning can help to reduce the mismatch between labor market needs and supplies of skills. Um, and fourthly, um, the development of company-specific skills helps in staff retention, or can help in staff retention. Um, uh, if organizations are concerned about losing their skilled workers to other organizations, to competitors, um, uh, workplace learning, which is uh, more specifically company-focused, can um, sometimes help in, in, in uh, staff retention. It should be said that there are disbenefits of that to the uh, country's economy as a whole. If that, if that um, uh, reduces labor market mobility, uh, it might be a benefit to the individual employer, uh, but a disbenefit to the, to, to the country as a whole if that, uh, if that negatively affects labor market mobility. Um, Interspersed in this presentation, I'm wanting to include a, quite a, a number of, 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 of um, case examples very briefly um, referenced. Um, uh, the first one I'm picking up here is um, uh, from some research carried out in Japan by the um, Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, uh, which found that um, uh, in research carried out in 2006 that 23 percent of companies reported that on-the-job training, a workplace learning in that definition, was uh, previously more important than off-the-job training, uh, but that increased um, to 32% of companies saying that on-the-job training is going to be more important in the future um, than off-the-job training. So quite a, a significant trend there in that, um, in that research in, in, in Japan. Um, the second example I'm picking up is, is one you can uh, look at and test out the effectiveness of workplace learning uh, whilst you're here in, in Thailand. Um, the, you will certainly have come across the 7-Eleven convenience shops in Thailand. There are, I'm not sure how many of them, I think 4,000. I'm not sure if I've got that number right or not, but certainly a very large number. Um, and uh, in a geographically dispersed organization like that, um, workplace learning is important. Uh, and in 7-Eleven, there's, a, there's a, pr a formal program of shop assistants being trained at the workplace, uh, that is in the stores, in the convenience stores, on product knowledge, on customer service, and so on. Uh, a bit on English language in some of the more tourist um, uh, uh, important areas of the country. Um, and that training is provided by a mix of store managers, of trainers, from the 7-Eleven training centers and by some computer-based training delivered through the, um, the technology of the, of, of the tills and the operating systems there. Uh, and the, the learning processes in 7-Eleven in Thailand are competence-based using generic retail competences as the starting point, but those are specifically tailored for the 7-Eleven the organization. So for those of you who are visitors to Thailand, that's a, uh, um, a means you can test out the effectiveness or not of, uh, of, of, of workplace learning in, in uh, a dispersed geographically. 
Um, and I pick out benefits to three sorts of organisations. Benefits of workplace learning to the country, nationally, to the economy. Uh, secondly, benefits to um, employers. And thirdly, benefits to individuals. And if I work um, fairly quickly through each of those in turn, firstly, uh, benefits to the national economy. Um, a range of benefits, I, I think. Um, workplace uh, training is one of the mechanisms for upskilling uh, the national workforce with employment relevant skills, and clearly that's, uh, that's important. The learning to learn aspects of workplace learning develops uh, flexibility, which is important in, in the current context uh, of rapid economic change, rapid technological change. Um, it's consistent with a global trend, including a trend in Asia, I think, of moving training progressively away from the supply side, from providers of training, and more to the demand side, to employers and employees. Um, and for those skills which are genetic, uh, generic and transferable, that can assist in labor mobility uh, across economic sectors and uh, geographically, but only for those skills which are generic and transferable. So a range of uh, benefits um, of workplace learning to national economies. Um, moving quickly through uh, a few examples of that, um, uh, many of um, national schemes involving and supporting workplace learning um, operate on some kind of levy grant system like the Skills Development Fund in Singapore, um, where companies pay a levy as part of their payroll um, and when they provide the training, they can recover, um, they can recover those costs. Um, the German uh, dual system is, is a well-known example of, of training with an important workplace emphasis. Um, perhaps less well-known, but I think very interesting, is, uh, is the somewhat equivalent apprenticeship program in Finland, which is a, a strongly competence-based program um, with a strong uh, workplace element. <coughs> um, and a recent um, scheme in, in the UK, Learn Direct program, has been developing learning materials, particularly e-learning materials, uh, which are employment relevant. Some of those are, are generic um, areas in literacy and numeracy and so on. Some of them are in social skills such as team working, and some are in sector specific. Um, training and learning materials for particular sectors such as manufacturing, such as retailing, and so on. Um, and materials, those materials can be used by employers as part of workplace learning, or by training organizations, or by individuals. Um, okay, so a range of benefits then of workplace learning nationally. Uh, moving on to benefits of workplace learning to employers. Again, a range of examples um, of benefits of workplace learning to employers. Um, increased relevance of learning and training to the uh, organization's skill development needs. Um, workplace learning can um, often be organized not to interrupt the normal production process, which is often in interrupted by people going on external training programs. Uh, workplace learning might be organized not to interrupt the normal production process, um, but indeed is often part of the normal production process. Um, workplace learning can help in attracting uh, new employees, uh, and similarly it can help in retaining um, employees if the employer is known in the community as one which provides high quality training. Um, and finally, um, because it's organization specific, Workplace learning can help in transmitting and underlining the organization's culture and values, and that's increasingly important when organizations are seeking to be different from each other um, and have a, a develop a competitive advantage um, in relation to others in their sector. So again, a, a range of benefits of workplace learning um, to employers. Um, this uh, is quite an interesting um, example from Ford Motors, the Employee Development and Assistance Program from a number of years ago, which in a sense isn't really workplace learning because it's out of workplace, uh, it's out of work um, location. Um, but interesting rationale that if people become 
more open to non-work-related training from the uh, funding they get for um, learning um, other things like languages or car repairs or whatever. Uh, if they become more open to um, non-work-related learning, they become more open also to work-related learning. Um, uh, and many, uh, a number of companies at least, perhaps not many companies, as part of their corporal social responsibility um, agenda, um, might make the training and learning facilities open to not just the employees of the company, but to a range of other organizations as well, as in these couple of examples from the Philippines. So, a range of benefits of workplace learning nationally, a range of benefits of workplace learning to employers, and uh, finally, a, a range of benefits of workplace learning to individuals. Um, uh, hopefully providing improved uh, job satisfaction as a result of developing new skills and a feeling of self-worth and improved self-image. Um, importantly, I think, uh, workplace learning can provide opportunities for people who have missed out on training opportunities in the past or for whom previous learning um, events were perhaps uns unsuccessful or a long time ago and they've got very negative views about them maybe. Um, clearly, the development of, uh, of skills gives individuals a higher value in the external labor market, including a higher financial value, and the um, acquisition of work-relevant skills uh, can help to ensure that people um, maintain employability. Um, and uh, workers' organizations, trade unions, and other related organizations have um, an important role in um, this area, uh, including encouraging and negotiating for the expansion of opportunities, particularly including for disadvantaged groups. Um, and the trade unions are uh, very, typically, uh, very uh, strongly supportive of, of, of ensuring equality and access, uh, particularly for disadvantaged groups. And I'll come back to trade union role in a bit more detail a bit later on. So, a range of benefits of workplace learning to the nation, to employers, and to individuals. Um, well, what might be an I what we might call an ideal model of workplace learning? Um, well, that would have a number of characteristics, I think, uh, likely to have many of the following um, characteristics. Um, an identification of the workers or learners' uh, current skills, an identification of short-term learning needs, an identification of longer-term learning needs. Um, the involvement of learning and training professionals in identifying options for future development, and importantly, the active involvement of the worker or the learner themselves in planning his or her uh, further development. The involvement of the, the worker or the learner's line manager in identifying and agreeing um, development plans, um, the um, establishment of an individual development plan agreeing how the short-term and longer-term uh, learning needs are likely to be met, um, checking that the um, development plans for individuals are aligned with and are consistent with where the organization's going, um, preferably involving some form of recognition of prior learning or recognition of current competences or whatever phrase might be used in the particular country. Uh, provision of a wide range of learning opportunities, both formal and informal. Um, identifying um, an experienced co-worker as a mentor or a coach. Um, linking and integrating a range of learning activities, not just having uh, isolated and freestanding activities. Um, workplace learning being related to specific work activities such as quality improvement processes, introduction of new technology and whatever, so that workplace learning is, is relevant and is authentic and is, is uh, connected uh, with the working situation and not distanced from it. Um, the involvement of the worker or learner in, in recording his or her uh, achievements and preferably um, the um, linking of uh, workplace learning into national formal uh, vocational qualifications framework so that people who complete workplace learning uh, can get a qualification or a part qualification or a unit qualification or something that is, that is recognized throughout the country. 
So um, a, an ideal model of workplace learning is likely to have quite a number of those characteristics, I think, perhaps not all of them in every case, but quite a number of them. Um, and organizations which have been successful in implementing workplace learning seem to have a number of characteristics. Um, uh, firstly, the organization is committed to training and workplace learning, uh, and the training is part of the company's uh, strategy and business plan. Um, learning opportunities are, are consciously constructed, um, a mix of both formal and um, uh, informal on the job and off the job uh, workplace learning activities, um, assessment carried out um, at the workplace, um, recognition of um, needs, for example, in, in of, of language and literacy and numeracy of the, the workplace. Um, a good system of record keeping, a process of recognition of prior learning, the involvement of co-workers, uh, supervisors or whoever as coaches and mentors, um, that learning is valued by the organization and there's a focus not just on learning particular skills and particular technologies and so on, but a focus on also more broadly on learning to learn. Well, if those are some of the um, characteristics of workplace learning and an organization that's successful in workplace learning, uh, where does e-learning fit into all this picture? Um, well, e-learning is, is of relevance because of a, quite a number of things, I think. Um, not in priority order, but just a, a range of, um, uh, of features. Partly because it can provide just-in-time learning, uh, rather than learning which takes place a long time before it might be needed, and you hope that the, the learner hasn't forgotten it by the time it's needed. Uh, it can de deliver small elements, small chunks of learning. Um, the content of learning programs can be customized to meet the learner's needs uh, and preferred learning styles, and I'll come back to this um, thing about preferred learning styles shortly. Um, it can provide a safe and non-judgmental learning environment um, and that can be particularly helpful to people um, whose last involvement in formal education might have been a long time ago and might not have been very successful. And this, this last one on this screen I think is particularly interesting in some cultures in Asia where losing face in public, in public settings is, is, is problematic, is difficult. Um, that the non-judgmental learning environment which e-learning can provide can be, can be very helpful um, in that respect. Um, it's possible to link learning directly with the, with the work processes, particularly if it uses technologies which are already part of those work processes. Um, like, for example, I mentioned in the 7-Eleven the example earlier, um, using the technology in the, in the convenience stores there to deliver some parts of workplace learning. Um, it can build on the notion of the, and support the notion of the learning organization. Um, E-learning may be cost-effective in relation to other delivery mechanisms. It may not be, but it uh, may be cost-effective uh, in relation to other comparison with other delivery mechanisms. Um, and it's consistent with the trend for employers generally wishing employees to take uh, a greater responsibility for at least some aspects of their learning because uh, it can provide greater control uh, to the employee um, over their learning processes. So e-learning, I think, has got a... Um, uh, a range of um, benefits uh, in relation to in relation to workplace learning specifically. Um, interesting example here from uh, an organisation um, uh, which has got headquartered in the UK, um, a group of pharmacists called Boots, which is a very big pharmacy organisation in the UK and um, has a number of retail outlets in, in some countries in Asia, particularly including in Thailand. Um, and Boots uh, chemists have introduced e-learning fairly recently using the technology which is in their stores, using the cash tills to deliver um, learning in store uh, in about 1,400 stores with a target group of about 60,000 people. So that's, that's a very big and very ambitious program. Um, providing e-learning during um, short modules, 10 to 15 minute modules, that kind of thing, um, in a number of areas, for example, including health and safety training, 
uh, selling skills, retailing skills, new product knowledge, those kind of things. And, and, and employees in the stores can take that um, e-learning material uh, in short chunks uh, delivered through the technology in the store uh, at times when it's, um, when it's quiet and there aren't many customers around. That's quite an interesting example, I think, of a, um, a program which has got many of the features that I've uh, um, mentioned just, um, just earlier. Another example from um, the UK, the National Health Service. Um, in hospitals and other health um, provision locations, um, there's uh, mandatory training in a number of areas, um, such as health and safety and hygiene and so on, and specialist training. Um, and in one geographical region of the country, um, the Mid-Yorkshire region, uh, for about 6,500 staff, in addition to using uh, computers and e-learning, they're making some quite interesting, innovative use of iPods and headphones and so on for a range of staff there, again, delivering uh, workplace learning in, in, in short chunks, some of that mandatory training and some of it for um, uh, generic training. Um, one of the uh, largest employers in the UK, the, the Postal Service, which in the UK is, is known as Royal Mail, um, has uh, developed a scheme to, to uh, provide uh, for its employees at modest cost PCs for their use at home. Um, and that so far has rolled out to about 20,000 employees. There are about 200,000 employees in the organization as a whole, so this has not gone throughout the organization yet, but has rolled out to about 20,000 employees. Uh, and that's providing software from a range of e-learning suppliers uh, as part of a learning for all program, uh, part of which is um, work relevant and part of which is, is, is generic skills. Um, uh, as, uh, another example from the UK, um, the government has recently, um, well in the last few years, set up what is called a trade union learning fund to um, encourage the trade unions to become, and support the trade unions to become more, directively, more directly involved in, um, in workplace learning. And a number of e-learning centers have been established in a range of different uh, industries and a range of different locations. And picking out here just, uh, just three examples of that, uh, for example, in fire stations, in conjunction with the fire brigades, trade unions, um, in an ice cream factory, or a range of ice cream factories, in conjunction with a general um, trade union, and in various bus depots in conjunction with the Transport Workers Union. So this is something where um, government is channeling funds through the trade unions for um, uh, encouraging workplace learning of, um, of, of workers. Um, well, a range of, a range of um, benefits of e-learning in workplace learning then. Um, what might be needed, what are the issues in relation to successful implementation of e-learning in the workplace? Um, well, one bit of bad news for the e-learning community from a, from a fairly recent survey, this is a UK um, survey, it might, not, might or might not be representative in other countries, uh, but the main um, professional institute for personnel and development um, reported last year um, that although 57% of organizations use e-learning, only 7% found that e-learning is the most effective um, learning process. So it's a bit, bit of bad news, I think, for the uh, e-learning e community. Um, however, um, in the equivalent survey, which happens every year, in the equivalent survey of 2002, five years pre uh, six years previously, um, respondents were very wary about the financial costs of e-learning and saying, uh, more than half of them saying that e-learning involves the possibility of wasting a lot of money. Uh, but more recently, that, 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 that view is uh, less strongly represented, and that figure had fallen to from 54% to 38%. So a, a bit of good news for the e-learning community, I think, from that, uh, from that survey. Um, so e-learning getting, getting embedded and progressively um, accepted, and more important, as part of the, um, the learning process. Um, and I think a number of you will be familiar with this, uh, this hype site cycle model of the uptake of new technologies, um, this five-stage hype cycle model by the Gartner group. Um, a technology trigger is a starting point, a 
peak of inflated expectations, followed by 